So as she said, today's webinar is going to be covering social media um, and how we can simplify those efforts through a powerful tool that Microsoft has introduced called Microsoft Social Engagement. And one of the key things to note is, as she also mentioned, that you already have this as a part of your subscription if you have Dynamics 365 online. So we can go ahead and see if it's a fit for you. We're going to go through how it can be used and what those integration points are. So I'm going to go ahead and move to our agenda. And the first thing that we're going to be doing here is an introduction to what is Microsoft Social Engagement. So I'm going to give you a baseline understanding of what the product is, uh, some of the functionality that it has, and then we're going to bring it full circle and understand you know, why you use it and what benefits does that bring. So after going through a brief overview, uh, we're going to get into the overview of the key modules. So get into the in-depth components that this application has. And then next we'll move into the integration cap capabilities. And as you've probably noticed with um, all of Microsoft's other platforms, there's a strong uh, vision in trying to create a unified Microsoft platform. So Microsoft social engagement is no different. Um, it has strong integration capabilities to not only Dynamics 365, but Microsoft Office as well. And then finally, we will be leaving a fair amount of time for questions and answers at the end. I want this webinar to be for you, so if we do have any questions, definitely feel free to ask them as we go. Um, or if it's a just general question, we can have them at the end, so feel free to submit those as I'm going throughout the webinar. So with that, let's go ahead and move to our first topic, which is what is Microsoft Social Engagement? So the first thing that it does is it automatically collects data from social media websites such as Facebook, uh, Twitter, and various other sources, um, which even include blog posts, videos, uh, news sources, and more. And for those of you who have heard of social listening, this was kind of the key functionality behind it. However, it kind of stopped at the point where it was mostly just listening, trying to gather and compile that data. What we now have is Microsoft Social Engagement, and this is what the product has evolved to. Um, it's since evolved to being able to now engage your customers. Uh, it's been engineered to allow you to respond to posts within from Facebook, tweets within Twitter, um, you know, all these different various so, social media outlets. You now have the ability to not only listen and compile and gather that data, but you have the ability to engage and respond as well and add that personal touch all within the one easy to use application. So while it's great to view and reply to all these within uh, one application, Microsoft Social Engagement also takes this step further and it brings that data into a central location where it's automatically brought into easy to review analytics. So we have a myriad of dashboards um, and learning tools and things like that that it takes this data in, uh, compiles it for you, and then gives it into uh, packages that you can use for actionable data to make strategic decisions on. So let's talk about why you use Microsoft Social Engagement. So the overall benefit is it simplifies your social media efforts while increasingly uh, or by, while simultaneously increasing your efficiency and your effectiveness. So for many organizations, uh, especially for the small to medium, it's hard to find the time to dedicate necessary effort to social media. And this tool maximizes the efficiency of your efforts to get the most out of the time that you can actually allocate. So also social media, uh, just as a general principle, um, you know, it has always been kind of owned by a few select people within the marketing department. And Microsoft Social Engagement is trying to bridge that gap to the other areas of your company or, and add a lot more breadth to the type of employees that are using this. So whether that's sales being able to make actual uh, social selling decisions off of social media or customer service being able to respond to complaints or information requests. Um, that's really the idea of social engagement, and it does that by personalizing the application to each individual user. So we already discussed uh, how it brings your data into a centralized location and providing that instant analytics and data. But to take it another step further, um, from a convenience standpoint, remember this is going to reduce the number of logins and passwords that you have to use. So you don't have to go into Twitter, put in your username, password, and then do specific searches there, and then do the same exercise for Facebook, and then for Instagram, and whatever else uh, piece of social media that you use. This allows you to have all that in one application, so you know, you're not spending all this time wasting it by entering passwords, doing searches that you do every single day, and having to cycle through these applications. You can get in with one login in a social engagement, see all of your different media, 
for within the one unified platform and uh, go from there. And the other thing to point out in this point is it's a familiar platform. And for those of you using Dynamics 365, you've already got a huge leg up because they've used a very similar user interface. It navigates pretty much the same way. So again, you know, one of the biggest thing anytime you're implementing new software is it needs to be user friendly, it needs to be familiar, your users need to be able to adopt it. And uh, that's one of the key pieces that we have with Microsoft social engagement. So next, uh, utilizing alerts and intelligence that allow you to be proactive as opposed to reactive in social media. So anytime there's an uptick in trends, um, you can have social media send you an email. So even if you're not logged in the application, you know, it can say, hey, we have, you know, 50% more posts today or than we did, you know, the previous days or whatever else. So if you're not aware of anything big that should be happening on social media, that can be your cue to go in and check. Make sure that there's not anything critical taking place and see what all the buzz is about. Um, you also have the ability, again, customizing it to specific users if posts get assigned to them. So within this application, I can take a tweet, for example, assign it to somebody, and then they receive an alert within Outlook as well. So all sorts of different alerts. And then moving forward to uh, the intelligence that it provides, um, we'll get into this further, but it has multiple different areas where it's a machine learning algorithm that tries to determine you know, what the intent of the post is, who should be seeing it, all these different pieces and allowing you to be really proactive in your social media approach. And then finally, being the uh, CRM guy that I am, there are direct integration features into Dynamics 365, uh, which eliminates the copy and paste of trying to post that in and also gives you that accurate archive data. You can see exactly when that tweet took place. You may have links directly to it. So much better than trying to, you know, piecemeal a CRM and social media together. You know, you have this native integration. So with that, let's go ahead and start moving to the bulk of our uh, presentation here um, and get into the modules that we have. So these are the five key modules I'm going to be covering today. The first one is your search setup, and this is kind of how all the, the magic happens here. You determine which... Twitter pages, Facebook pages, hashtags, keywords that you want to bring into the system, which then produces your analytics, so brings them into those dashboards within the analytics uh, component. And that's really the heart of the application, taking all this data in and then making the actionable decisions off of it. And again, within these analytic dashboards, these are completely out of the box. This is a great tool that I love implementing for our customers because it takes you know, somewhat minimal effort. There's so much pre-built into this that it's not a lot of customization to get dashboards set up. So the part that does take a little bit of uh, work setting up is doing things like the social center. So for example, for our customer service team, we can set up what we call uh, streams that based off of criteria, and customer service requests, information requests, we can have streams set up, and within this, you can assign to different uh, users within the organization for posts to follow up on, uh, so on and so forth there. Next, we have the activity maps. Um, one of the you know beautiful things about social media, the internet in general, is we become much better at tracking things, and well, so it's beautiful and scary at the same time, because if I put out a tweet right now, uh, it would be known within all these different applications that I put that tweet out from Michigan within the United States. So these activity maps, you can see where geographically your buzz is. So if you're, let's say you're a nationwide customer, um, or your, well, your customer base is nationwide, you can see where you're being successful. Are you more successful in the West Coast, the East Coast, Midwest, et cetera? So you can see where your social media strategy is actually reaching. And then finally, social selling, and that's where you get to your personal relationship assistant. So we'll get into all these modules individual, individually, but we're going to start with the search setup. So this is where you really get started. So this is where you're going to define those parameters on where, how you're going to gather the data. So in the, my image on the right, you can see you know, you, I have a search topic set up for Interdine BMI. I want to track everything about Interdine BMI that's happening within social media. So I'm following their Twitter page. So anything that they put out, 
I'm also following anytime somebody says hashtag Interdyne BMI, for example. So if it's not directly on their own profile, it'll show up as well. Facebook pages, it's the same thing. Now, Facebook, you actually typically do follow specific pages, and that's what I have set up here. Um, you also have the ability, like I said, to follow Instagram profiles. But then we move into keyword searches. So anytime somebody's saying Interdyne BMI, this will show up if it's in a news article or a blog. Um, and then you can, again, put specific hashtags that will look across all applications to pull in this data. So this is really what you're setting up initially to start tracking that data, start figuring out um, you know, what's being said about the topics that are most important to you. And we're gonna go through this a little bit more later, but the key thing to keep in mind here is the information on social media on public profiles, it's just a free for all. You can access it. So for any one of your companies, I could set up a search topic to track what you're saying on social media, what people are saying about you. So almost importantly as it can be to track information about your specific organization is the different variables that affect your organization. So whether that's competitors, uh, being able to see what your competitors are doing, if it's specific product lines that you need to keep track of or industry topics that you want to keep track of, you can follow these into or, and pull these into social media or I should say Microsoft social engagement as well. And the next part of the uh, search setup that, you know, just kind of helping everybody understand how this works. I have three, and this is all I've used for my demo environment, I have three uh, dummy accounts, one for Twitter, one for Instagram, and one for Facebook. And what those do is it allows me to acquire that data. So because these are now part of those different application interfaces, it's what's actually going in to the application saying, okay, somebody said something on Twitter about at interdynebmi.com or at interdynebmi and then it'll pull it into my social engagement. So the other thing to keep in mind is not everybody within the application has to use the same profile. So I have these three here for acquiring data, and I can use them to post and reply and whatever else, but you can have multiple, even for one user, you could have multiple accounts. So I could have Interdyne BMI's Twitter page, for example, as well as my personal, if I wanna send out uh, replies and tweets from either or. So it is user specific and you can choose which profiles uh, users have access to be able to manage and tweet from. So that's kind of how we get started. That's where we get our search topics, where we pull in our information. We then move to what I feel is the heart of the application, the analytics. This is the hard data that's coming in. So I know this is kind of a busy slide and I'm going to go through it. Um, throughout all the dashboards, these are kind of the same things that you're going to see. So in the top left, we have the ability to select our predefined dashboards, and we're going to go through these and the, the different value that they bring. Um, but you're always able to select different dashboards. The category selector is where I was talking about, for example, I have Interdyne BMI set up as a category. I can also have a competitor set up as, or our competitors as a whole even set up as a category. I can have products being tracked as categories. And when you change these categories, all of the dashboards change with it immediately. So it's within a couple seconds, it's now pulled you a completely customized free set of uh, new information around those specific categories that I selected. And that's gonna be the same for any of these other filters we apply. So I can add different filters. So for example, Internet BMI, we hosted a golf outing for all of our customers last week. Um, and our partners alike. So I could say, if I want to add a filter for golf, for example, I can see all posts that were made from ourselves and our customers about Interdyne BMI's golf outing. Uh, time frames, you can set customized time frames, or you can go by the last month, last week, today. Um, and again, every single time you do this, the dashboard is going to show only posts relevant and the analytics relevant to those filters. Uh, trends. So again, very important part of social media is, you know, you're hoping to continually gain steam, keep that word of mouth going about your company, you know, hopefully in a positive ma manner, but that's, that's the goal. So your trends, it will manage, it will tell you not only how many posts that you have in the given time frame that you're, you've selected, but also how it's done, um, you know, five times over, for example, if you want to see all posts within the last week, it'll go back five weeks and say, okay, overall, you're 26% higher on average, for example. 
And then finally, and this is one of the critical pieces on the uh, right side here, you have the ability to see posts. So I can click this open and I'll be able to see every single specific post that is making up these dashboards. Not only see them, but again, I can from directly within this application, reply, retweet, um, you know, send private messages, uh, tag in, individuals internally to follow up with these posts. So you have that ability. You also have the ability, should you want to take it into, let's say it's a tweet, you can take that into Twitter as well. So within all of these dashboards, that post pane stays there throughout. So that's kind of an overview of the dashboards we get with the analytics. I'm going to start going into the specific components of that. So the first one that we have is the conversations dashboard. And again, going back to that machine learning, in the top left, you see we have this sentiment um, grid here. And what that does is it gives you an overall sense of, you know, how many positive, how many neutral, how many negative uh, comments do we have. And again, that's machine learning. It's an algorithm from Microsoft that is continually learning to look for key buzzwords, uh, phrases, so on and so forth that you can then make actionable decisions off of. Say, okay, I want to see all of my negative comments and I want to make sure somebody in our customer service department follows up with that. So I could then click this red part of our sentiment grid and it will then pull up all the posts that are relevant and I can go through and assign them to my customer service team and reply to them directly. Another part of the uh, artificial intelligence that we have is this intentions over here on the left as well. So being able to see a bunch of different um, top generalized topics that these posts would be about and it's actually become very accurate. I've been very impressed with it. So is the post just a general information request? Is it a purchase request? Is somebody looking for support? Are they complaining about your products potentially? Um, it's automatically applying these tags. And again, every single one of these dashboards are interactive. So I could click on information request, for example, and it would pull up all the posts relevant to that. So again, as you use it more and more, the system learns and it makes decisions off of that. Uh, going through a couple other key ones, so the phrases, you have it front and center. So seeing the most commonly used phrases for your given search topics. So if I want to see all posts that mentioned uh, artificial intelligence, for example, or Microsoft, I can click that and then it would only show me posts relevant to that. And it would dive further. So I would say, okay, within these posts that have artificial intelligence, these are the phrases that are being used the most with it. Maybe it's frustrating, maybe it's impressive, whatever it might be. You also have sources, so being able to see where these are coming from. The blue is, the, or the light blue is Twitter, blogs is the orange, Facebook is the blue, videos, um, you know, Reddit, all these different sources that it can come from. So again, this, and, and then you can also see the phrase history. So for these primary uh, topics, are, is it trending up or down? So really this dashboard was built to look into the content of what the users are saying and provide these dashboards for it. So the sentiment dashboard, or actually we're going to go to location next. The location dashboard, um, again, we have sentiment and that's a key part of it. We can see now we, that we can organize these by geographical location. So within this dashboard, the main focus is where is this coming from? So we have the ability to filter by specific countries, uh, regions, cities, etc. So I can, again, interact with these dashboards. If I am a representative that you know handles South America, I can filter this to show only South America. And you know maybe I'm a person who speaks Spanish, I can then filter off of language as well. So that's a benefit that a lot of our uh, customers who work in multilingual landscapes, uh, this is very helpful to allow their employees to filter quickly by their language of expertise. So I don't want to get too much in the uh, location dashboard. Um, the sources dashboard is a, uh, one of my favorites here because it really helps you understand how your strategy is going for each one of your applications. If you're neglecting an application, um, things like that. So one of the key things to keep in mind, uh, you know, Twitter is typically the most just because, it, you, just from what I've noticed, it's what businesses use the most to, you know, tweet out about promotions that they're running, um, you know, promote webinars, things like that. So you have these different graphs that can show, okay, what's the 
the usage not only by your page but how frequently people are tweeting about you um, whatever that might be so again Twitter blogs Instagram Facebook uh, news all these different charts to show the different sources and without being too much too repetitive again it's you're able to look at these dissect it and pull up the specific posts that apply to each of these as well so that is uh, the pre-built dashboards that it comes now there is some configuration that you can do here uh, to kind of filter this and we've touched on it already so I could for example create a category of search topics called competitors and here I can pull in my competitors I can get their information um, their, or their social media information that's coming in and uh, for example on the screen to the right is I can see you know as far as just a social media footprint in general is Contoso or Proswear getting more traction in that so I can pull that up and then I can sort by specific competitors as well I can also see when I have an uptick in posts so I, if something big's happening with my competitors what's going on there why do they all of a sudden triple what how much activity they've had and it might be a positive thing where they're promoting something or it might be a negative thing so let's say that they have a shortage on supply or whatever else and they have unhappy customers that are posting you could then go in see those posts that are being made and contact those customers directly say hey we have inventory we'd love to work with you um, things of that nature so again you, have, you can use your imagination on a bunch of different ways that you can use this application and the key thing to keep in mind uh, you know just as a reminder for our customers who barely use social media at all you can still use this to be a very powerful tool you don't have to be posting to make this a powerful tool you can use this to track the competitive landscape you can use it to track products you can use it to track industries um, so this is how you would do that you'd set up these categories and then again you get the same exact custom or uh, pre-built dashboards that came with the other uh, search categories that I showed earlier so with that let's go ahead and move to our next module so we've gone through the search setup we've gone through the analytics it's very generic um, it's for the entire organization it's just the, you know compiling that data now what do we do with it how do we make this fit for individual people within different business units so whether it's marketing or customer service that's where socials or the social center comes in so you are able to set up these social streams by specific criteria. So, for example, I have Interdyne BMI as one of mine. So, anytime somebody's tweeting at Interdyne BMI about Interdyne BMI, posting about it in the blog, I have the ability to have that automatically pull into a social center stream. You also have the ability to set up other streams that might be product related, competitor related, um, but you also can get more. Uh, into it than that you can make it so I have sales streams so customers asking for quotes on a product potentially or offerings that we have or customer service streams where customers are asking for help you can set these up and within these social panes you have the ability to assign it to internal people again you still have the ability to reply uh, tweet ex directly from here so for example we had our golf outing last week. We had KE Commerce attend one of our partners that we, were, you know, we're very lucky to have. They help sponsor our events. Um, they sent out a very nice, nice tweet about us last week. So directly from within the application, I had this come into my social stream. You know, it automatically knew that this was a positive thing that they were saying about us. I can see the tweet directly from here and directly from the application. I can reply, retweet, um, send uh, personal messages. And then I can also assign other people to follow up with it if I want to do a customer service case, for example. So, or set, assign it to a salesperson to you know really go out and personally thank them for their support. So, those are some of the things you can do within the social center. So, the next module we have is the activity maps, and I'm going to go kind of quickly through this one. It is very cool functionality, but you know unless you're a very global uh, customer. The time frames for these are typically within 24 hours. So you can set up these activity maps for uh, search topics. So it can be search topic, category specific. Um, and it's a, it essentially comes with two pre-built maps. The first one is a buzz map. So that's what we're on right now. Um, you can see all these different shades of blue. 
and that shows geographically, you know, how active are people tweeting, posting Facebook blogs, news articles about your specific search topics. Um, a couple other key things that you can do, uh, you can pull in the analytics into this as well. So if I wanted to see specifically, you know, why, why is this rogue blue dot in Russia, who knows, whatever different areas that you want. You can click that, see the post that they had. You can flip it to the sentiments map and see is it overall positive, is it overall negative. And that's the one that I feel like is a little bit more useful. So, for example, you also have uh, the map selector or the filter selector, so you can drag across a specific region. If I wanted to turn on sentiments, for example, to see, okay, you know, I want to look at the United States. It's overwhelmingly positive in the East Coast, but overwhelmingly negative in the West Coast. So why is that happening? So again, being able to take this real-time actionable data and uh, make strategic decisions off of it. And then finally, social selling. So this is a rapidly, and I mean rapidly developing part of this application that is continually learning. It's an intuitive assistant that learns as you go based off of your actions, and then it's going to make recommendations for what's most important to you and how you could upsell, how you can maintain those relationships with our customers. So you're seeing a lot of happy people on golf courses and things like that in this presentation because it just served well. We had it last week. Um, you know, we can use this to say, okay, people are tweeting about this and you, you need to go out and thank them. Now, if that's not necessarily your role, um, you're more of a taking leads and selling, you can remove these from your assistant and it's going to learn as you go. So if you start sharing things that your customers say, it's basically going to say, okay, these are the things that you as a salesperson want to see. And it will start showing you more things like that. So you also have the ability to get started by showing personalized or setting personalized filters as well. So to kind of give it a head start, but really it, the, the magic here is that it just starts learning and going or continually learning as you go. So that was uh, an overview of the basic capabilities of the modules. So let's get into the integration capabilities. So uh, the first one, again, we mentioned it has a direct integration with Microsoft Office. So primarily Office 365. So you have custom alerts that you can set up within the message center. And this is where I kind of alluded to this in the why use it page. You have the ability to set up custom alerts that if trends start drastically changing, even though you have not logged into social media and even let's say a week, it's gonna send you an email and basically say, hey, get in here, take a look and see what's happening. There's some big movement. You also have the ability, if you're tagging uh, customer service representatives within social engagement, that, hey, there's a post here that's assigned to you. Um, it's a support case, you need to get in there and take a look. So those are some of the different integrations that you have with the office. You also have the ability to download lists of uh, the posts and the information that happened um, within the application. Um, so those dashboards, you can download those uh, into reportable data as well. And then finally, uh, the part that I am overwhelmingly excited about is the integration of Dynamics 365. So we have the ability, and this is a very quick and easy setup, is to integrate Dynamics 365 with your Microsoft social engagement environment. And it takes it multiple steps further. So it does that by integrating these dashboards directly in. So this is a screenshot of some sample uh, social engagement dashboards that take place. So you don't even have to log into social engagement every day to see in general what the general sentiment is, what your trends are. Um, you know, just a general landscape of everything that's happening from your social uh, engagement. And then the part that I'm going to demonstrate for you live here is converting a post um, from social engagement to customer service within Dynamics 365. You also have the ability to convert leads and uh, whatever else from posts, but my example today is going to be uh, converting a Dynamics 365 or converting a Microsoft social engagement post that we received into a case in Dynamics 365 and show you how we can bring that full circle. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into my live social engagement environment. All right, and here we are. So again, this is my demo environment. I have a uh, very generic um, search topic set up for Interdyne BMI and people tweeting about Interdyne BMI. I can see posts that have been made. 
Um, I also have the ability to navigate within my modules to the social center. So I have a pane of specific criteria here that I want to track of things specifically about Interdyne BMI. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here for you. So here's a post that we have, and with one click, I can go ahead and link this into CRM, and then in just a second after it's done creating, it's going to pull this up here, and it's giving me information about the case title that's created um, and all that. So while that's happening, let's talk about what I'm looking at here. So we had a one of our customers tweet out to us that they're having trouble understanding the workflow engine in Dynamics 365, and they're asking for any recommendations on how they could learn to possibly use it. So I've now, with one click, linked this into uh, Dynamics 365, and I can open it directly from within here. Um, there's a separate uh, case management tool within social engagement, so you don't actually have to leave the application, but I want to utilize the full, rich application that we have within Dynamics 365. So I'm going to navigate to my cases in Dynamics 365, and you can see my most recently created one right here at the top is that post, and I can go ahead and open that up. So with a couple clicks, we've now created that case in Dynamics 365, and now we can take that directly from social media and start following up. So I can have different activities that I take place, so I call out to this customer that we already know. I can go ahead and say, you know, had a conversation, recommended admin training, whatever it might be, and it'll date and time stamp it, same as it always does within Dynamics 365. And now I can, I've now taken this from just a simple tweet to you know, a great set of archive data, getting that 365 degree view of the customer and saying we got this customer, these are the cases that they have, these are the things that they're tweeting out. Um, being able to have this integration there is very powerful. You also then get to use the full suite of CRM capabilities as well by having this integrated. So maybe we have a KB record or article on here about, um, you know, a workflow engine, you know, a, a get started, you know, quick help article that we've already posted to our knowledge base. We can then go ahead and navigate to this and then send it directly from uh, within CRM. So again, as we keep going now, if you wanted to, you also have the ability within this social center Let's say it's a customer that we didn't uh, have information within CRM already. I can then reply and say, sorry to hear you're having trouble. Please, you know, direct message your contact information and we'll reach out to you, right? So then with that, I can simply click reply and it's going to go ahead and post it in there. So. Again, these are the types of things, and you can see now that I've posted it in there, um, this conversation will update once it gets out there. Um, another cool thing that it did uh, behind the scenes, what I mentioned earlier, is that information request tag. Um, the system, without any interaction, any uh, input from me, was able to understand that this is an information request. And then I have the ability to say, yes, that's right, or no, that was incorrect and it'll remove that tag, and it's going to help it learn in the future. So I can go ahead and say, yep, that's correct. Go ahead and select that. So that's bringing the case into Dynamics 365. That's how we can interact with it uh, between the two applications. Very strong, powerful tool that's very, very easy to use. Um, hopefully you can see when I was navigating around, these two interfaces look very similar. So again, one of the biggest things that you always need to do when you're implementing software is make sure that your users can understand it and that there's a low barrier to entry, um, which I feel is one of the biggest strengths that these applications have. So let's go ahead and let's start wrapping up here. A um, couple closing comments that I want to make. So I'm going to pull my PowerPoint back up. So first thing, you know, as a general summary, what you're trying to do here and what uh, Microsoft Social Engagement accomplishes for you drastically increases your efficiency as well as your effectiveness within social media. And what I mean by that is you have the ability to get so much more out of the efforts that you actually put in. Again, everybody's, a, you know, they'd love to have the time to dedicate to social media, but we find far too often that it's just a kind of an afterthought, right? 
the, the time getting started, the time uh, going through all the different applications, having to log into separate applications, doing the same searches, whatever it might be. It's cumbersome. It's way too much admin time. So this brings it all into one application, making you much more efficient, and then making you much more effective as well, having that actionable data, the trends, um, being able to monitor your overall footprint in the competitive landscape versus your, co or your competitors. Which brings me to my next point. Um, it can be a very powerful tool for organizations who barely use social media at all. We kind of touched on this again. I'd argue it's possibly even more important, or at least equally important, to customers who are using social media all the time because really you know you currently have no vision if you're not us utilizing social media right now you have no vision whatsoever of what's happening in your industry or your landscape um, so you can track your competitors you can s track specific products things like that and then once you get set up you know you can do things to really start saying okay this competitor has been very effective in social media we're doing nothing how can we emulate what they're doing so utilizing this free strategy, this free information that your competitors are putting out there, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's put it all out there for you to go out and seize it. So I, it only takes a couple seconds to retweet something. So even if the majority of your actions in social media is just retweeting things that help promote your products, that takes next to no time and can help you really get started. Um, next, uh, if you already own Dynamics 365, you already own Microsoft Social Engagement. So this, if you own any of the applications, you have this product already. So from software cost perspective, there's nothing added here for you. This is just a free piece of technology waiting to be installed. Um, and the thing that I love about this application is Microsoft's done a great job at making this a low barrier to entry to get set up. The majority of what you saw today was pre-built. So with the exception of the categories and the search topics, that take minimal time to get set up. You can set up social streams, um, but really as far as getting in and start tracking that information, you know, it's a very low barrier to entry and you can get started pretty much immediately. And that brings me to my final point, which is as always, as Internet BMI customers and people interested in working with us, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us for more information. We'd love to talk to you about it. We have a very strong team, a very capable team uh, that can help you with this. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And finally, speaking of questions, if you have any, uh, now's the time. So I sincerely thank you all for attending. And uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask them now. Thank you, Ryan. It doesn't look like anyone had any questions submitted during the session. You must have done such a great job explaining everything. <laughs> <laughs> we can assume. Yes. So. Well, thank you all for attending today, and thanks, Ryan, for walking us through social engagement for Dynamics 365. My pleasure. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.